Hey YouTube, it's IC. Welcome to the 235th episode of Best Tech and Fun Rumors. Let's talk jailbreaking, the next generation iPhone, and Apple's September 9th media event. All right, so to start off, this episode of Best Tech and Fun Rumors is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to have more resources for you guys linked to in the cards and annotations throughout this video, as well as down below in the more info, of course. And also be sure to rate this video up and stick around to the end. I'm going to be discussing not only who won the latest giveaway, which of course was the $100 iTunes or Amazon gift card giveaway, but also an all new giveaway I'm going to be holding next month the iPhone 6s. Now let's go ahead and get straight into things. First of all, talking about iOS 8.4.1, the firmware that does indeed patch the Taiji untethered jailbreak. So yes, for those of you who didn't know, iOS 8.4.1 renders the Taiji jailbreak useless. We've already known that, and if you want additional information, definitely check out my video discussing the release when it was actually issued to the public, as well as what it patches beyond iOS 8.4 and the Taiji jailbreak. It actually closes a number of other vulnerabilities, too. And approximately one week ago at Hackpone 2015, a security conference, Pangu stated that they could indeed jailbreak 8.4.1, and they actually demonstrated it on an iPhone 6. Now, it was more of a proof of concept than really anything else, stating, yes, we can jailbreak the latest public firmware from Apple, even though it closes a number of security vulnerabilities. So let's talk timing for a second. Now, it wouldn't really make sense for Pangu to release a jailbreak for iOS 8.4.1 with iOS 9 so close. Earlier this week, Apple sent out invitations to their September 9th media event, which will certainly play host to the unveiling of the next generation iPhones, being the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. Potentially more, we'll get into that in a second though. And following Apple's past September release cycles, that means that the next generation iPhone will be available to purchase in stores and will start arriving to those who actually pre-ordered it on September 18th, which of course means iOS 9 will need to be issued to the public before then. And actually looking back last year at iOS 8, the event was also on September 9th and the firmware is officially released to the public for all devices on September 17th. So if the event is on the 9th of September, that means we can most likely expect the release of iOS 9 to be two or three days preceding that of the iPhone 6s, so either on September 16th or the 15th. So guys, that's just an approximation of iOS 9's final release date. That could change. We will know more definitely on September 9th, but at any rate, either way you slice it, it's definitely less than a month away. So would it really make sense for an iOS 8.4.1 jailbreak with the next major firmware so close? Not really. The only way it would is if the vulnerabilities that Pangu exploited on iOS 8.4.1 no longer persist in iOS 9, meaning the vulnerabilities will no longer be exploitable. But with each passing day without another jailbreak for 8.4.1, the chances of that happening become significantly reduced. And you might say, hey, wait a second. I thought iOS 9 was considered to be rootless, meaning we wouldn't be able to achieve root access and in turn jailbreak on iOS 9. Now, while the term rootless does exist and it is relevant to iOS 9, it's actually the internal designation for the security improvements that Apple has taken in iOS 9 that doesn't necessarily translate into meaning unjailbreakable. There definitely will be future jailbreak utilities on iOS 9. In fact, there's even a new team that will enter the jailbreak scene, dubbed the Keen Team, who does have past experience exploiting Apple's mobile software. And they stated that they're interested in teaming up and collaborating with Pangu to try and jailbreak the next release, of course being iOS 9. But back to iOS 8.4.1 for a second, even if a couple of the vulnerabilities Pangu used during their demonstration to jailbreak the firmware persist in iOS 9, wouldn't it be worth it to have a jailbreak on the latest public firmware, which offers massive improvements, than to have one on iOS 8.4.1, which really just patches the Taiji untethered jailbreak for a few short weeks. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the topic. Now, really quick, let's talk about the September 9th event. So at it, we're expected to see not only the iPhone 6S and iPhone 6S Plus, but possibly the next generation Apple TV, which as of late is rumored to feature a completely revised controller with motion options, kind of like the Wii, voice input for Siri and dictation control, a touchpad, as well as physical buttons, and a price tag of either $149 or $199. And the third generation Apple TV will continue continue in production for $69 off the shelf. Beyond that, it's also possible that we may see some Mac upgrades, possibly even a MacBook. After all, the new Intel Skylake Core M processors were recently announced, which will be intended for the Retina MacBook Pro that supposedly boasts 
17% CPU performance boosts over the last generation and 41% Intel HD graphics performance enhancements, again over the corresponding processor found in the first new Retina MacBook. Another interesting note is that the cinema displays are set to become obsolete in Apple's system right before the September 9th event, which means we may receive another panel from Apple, hopefully something like the 5K display found in the new Retina iMacs. I personally would really love that because I use Mac Pro for editing and we're stuck with some outdated display tech, at least from Apple. You have to go third party if you want that 4K. And as of now, 5K really isn't an option. So hopefully Apple will set that straight next month and start accommodating the prosumer users again. And as far as the rumored 12 inch iPad Pro is concerned, which is going to be significantly bigger than the current 9.7 inch iPad, which is the largest one you can purchase to date, that probably won't make an appearance until October or or later. Again, as I've mentioned in some of my other recent rumors videos, the device was supposedly picked out in some analytics software as running iOS 9.1, which obviously won't be available next month. And that makes perfect sense. And it allows for enough time between the iPhones as well as the new iPads. We may also see the iPad mini 4 and possibly the iPad Air 3, though there are some sketchy reports as of late suggesting that we won't actually see the iPad Air 3 this year and that Apple will wait actually until next year. I don't believe it personally. Let me know what you guys think below. We'll just have to wait until October though. And speaking of October, before we get into the iPhone 6S rumors recap, apparently the next generation Apple TV 4 will be available for purchase in October and not September according to some of these latest reports. Again though, everything should be revealed next month on the 9th. Speaking of, I wanted to mention this now, I am going to actually have some live coverage for you guys. I'll have more details as we start to approach the event, so just be sure to click the subscribe button down below next to my channel name if you have yet to and you'll be completely updated when I actually make those announcements. Now, as far as the iPhone 6S is concerned, recently the front display panel leaked. Guess what? It's supposedly heavier and slightly thicker than the corresponding component found in the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. The reason for that is probably the implementation of Force Touch technology, which may actually receive a different name for the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, but essentially what it will do is determine how much pressure you're actually putting into your touches and do different things accordingly. I have more information on that in one of my recent videos. Just be sure to check it out for some of the possible uses or implementations of Force Touch. But as of now, it looks like that's going to be the main selling point for the next generation iPhone. Every other year, Apple introduces an S update, which actually improves on the previous generation while maintaining pretty much the same design. Initially, it was with the iPhone 3GS, which the S stood for speed, and then 4S, Siri, 5S, security with Touch ID, and now 6S. Well, what's that going to be? Probably screen for Force Touch, but nothing will be confirmed again until the official event where Apple takes the stage and announces the new iPhones. And while we have the invitation up on the screen that Apple actually sent out for the aforementioned event, when we're looking at it, it could possibly indicate Force Touch. If you look at the stem of the Apple logo, it's kind of reminiscent of a finger and the base of the logo kind of representing a screen with the waves on either side indicating pressure sensitivity. And of course, simultaneously, the new Siri redesign. As far as everything else goes for the iPhone 6S, two gigabytes of RAM, an Apple A9 CPU for improved performance, even beyond the addition of two gigs of RAM, a 12 megapixel camera being supposedly one of the biggest camera improvements to the iPhone since its initial release, kind of slightly revised colors, so a new rose gold color option that will closely match that of the high-end Apple Watch edition, as well as a darker version of the space gray. And finally, Force Touch and any other possible surprises Apple decides to throw at us. Now, as far as my giveaways are concerned, I did randomly select the winner for the $100 gift card. They have been contacted and they'll select their prize shortly and I'll get it sent off to them. Now, I am going to hold an all new iPhone 6S giveaway after the device is officially announced. So be sure to rate this video up, stick around, subscribe. I'm also going to have tons of other awesome giveaways for you guys. Be sure to check out freeappsfast.com inside of Mobile Safari, download some of the free applications there for points and redeem them for some awesome prizes, including paid apps from Apple's App Store and gift cards. That will also be an integral part to my upcoming giveaways because of course that's likely how we're going to receive the funding for them. And that wraps up this video. Leave 
any of your thoughts down below in the comments. And as for the question of the day, let me know what you guys think about the next Untethered Jailbreak. Should they save it for iOS 9 if they can, or should they release it for iOS 8.4.1? Either way, again, let me know down below. And if you want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos similar to this one, or other videos covering various things ranging from the iPhone success to iOS 9 and jailbreaking, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me one of your circles inside of Google+, Plus, as well as follow me on Instagram at ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.